St. George and the Dragon of Hector's deeds did Homer sing, the slack of stately Troy. But Greece, fair Helena, did bring, which was Sir Paris's only joy. By my pen I will recite St. George's deeds and the English knight. Against the Saracens so rude, fought he is full long and many a day. Where many garnets he'd subdued, in honour of the Christian way. After many adventures past to Egypt land, he came at last. Now is the story plain doth tell. Within next that country there did rest a dreadful dragon, fierce and fell, whereby there was full sore oppressed, who by his poison breath each day did many of the city slay. Grief ever on did grow so great throughout the limits of the land, that they, their wise men did entreat to slew their cunning out of hand. What way they might this fiend destroy, that what that did the country thus annoy? The wise men all before the king, arts of framed in contentance, a dragon none of death might bring by any means they could invent. His skin more hard and brass was found, a sword not spear would pierce nor wound. When these people, when this the people understood, they cried out most piously, the dragon's breath infects their blood, that every day in heaps they die. Among them such a plague it bred, and livid scared were buried or dead. No, uh, no means were there were there were there were as they would hear for a please the dragon's rage. But at present some virgin clear, whose blood he for he might survey away survey. His day would a maiden eat, for a lay is hungry, hunger great. This thing by art, but the wise men found, which truly must observe to be, whereupon throughout the city round, a virgin, a virgin pure of good degree, was by the king's commission still, taken up to serve the dragon's will. Thus did the dragons every day, untimely crop some virgin flower, Till the knees were worn away, and none were left for him to devour. So even the king's fair daughter, bright, by a father's only heart's delight, a father's only heart's delight, they came after the officers to the king, that had heavy measures to declare, which did his heart's with sorrow sing, sting, she is, could have he, my kingdom's the heir. Our letters all be poisoned here, it he would die, that is my, that is my dear. Then rose the people presently, and to the king in rage they went. They said his daughter's dear would, would die, should die in a king's dragon's fury to prevent. Our daughters all are dead, quoth if they, you they been made the dragon's prey, and by their blood we rescued were, and now have slaving. Thy life, therefore, by, and now in smooth in it's but fairy, for us thy daughter should die. I say, my daughter, said the king, and let me feel the dragon sting. Now fell fair, Sabara, on her knee, and to her father dear did say, O oh, father, strive thus, not lust for me, but let me be the dragon's prey, but it may be for my own sake alone. His plague upon the land has thrown. It's better that I should die, she said, than all our subjects perish quite. Perhaps the dragon here has laid for my offence to work his spite. And after he has stuck his my gore, that your land shall feel the grief no more. What haste thou done, done my daughter's dear, for it to, to desire this heavy scourge, is my fault as may you appear. When, which makes the guards on state of purge, the purge that ought I die to stint and strife, it, and to preserve thy happy life. 
Great night, men, men. All the children, people cried. Thy death to us cannot, can do no good or safety. Oh, he does abide. I'm making here the dragon's food. Lo, here I am. I come, called she. Therefore, do what you will with me. Nay, stay, dear daughter, called the queen. As thou art a virgin bright, that has for virtue famous been. So let me clutter thee in all in white, and crown my head with flowers sweet, ornament for virgin's meat. And when she was attired so, according to her mother's mind, on to the state, then she did go, to which she tender limbs they bind, and bury, being bound to stake a frill, she bade farewell unto, unto them all. Farewell, my father dear, quote of she, my sweet mother, meek and mild. Take you no fault, for thou weep not for me, for you may have another child. Since for my God, for my country, good, I die, death I do receive, most willingly believe. The king and queen and all, and all their train, with weeping eyes, went then, their way, their daughter, there remain to the hungry dragon's prey. But as he did, their weeping lie, behold, St. George came riding by, and seeing their lady bright, so rudely tied a pot onto a stake, so well became a valiant knight, he sat straight to her and his way did take. Tell me, the sweet maiden, then quoth he, what can I, this abuse of thee? Oh, lo, by Christian, his cross I wore, thou, which here is figured on my breast, I avenge it with my brow, and break my lance upon his chest. And speaking thus, whereupon, where was, where, 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 as he stood, a dragon issued from the wood. The lady did first a spray, a dreadful dragon coming so, until said dragon, George, a loud cry, and wheeled him away to go. Here comes that cursed fiend, could have she, as soon I'll make an end of me. But then George, then looking around about, a fiery dragon soon espied, and his knight of courage stout against him did not, did most furiously ride. With such blows he did him great, he fell beneath his horse's feet. From his lance, that was so strong, he came gasping in his face. In his mouth he trussed along, he could pierce no further pl- other place. And out of in the lady view, his mighty dragon, straight he slew. The save of his poison breath couldn't do this holy knight no harm. Thus be the lady saved from death. A home he laid her by the arm, which then the king Pottery did see, this was great mirth and melody. When as a, when his valiant champion there had stayed a dragon in the field to court, he brought the lady fair, which to their hearts would did much joy did yield. He is the court of Egypt slayed, till he most fatally was betrayed. The lady dearly loved the knight, he counted her his only delight. But when their love was brought to light, it turned into the great annoy, till the Monaco king was in the court, who to the orchard did resort daily to take the pleasure air, for the pleasure's sake he used to walk. Under wall he oft did hear St. George's lady sabre talk, a lovely shrewd into the king, which to St. George great woe did bring. These kings together did devise to make the Christian knight away, and let us him in curious wise they straightway sent to Persia, but right to the Sinopoi him to kill, a treasury blood to spill. Thus they will, they for the good, did him reward, with evil most certainty, to which foul means they had agreed in regard to work his death most cruelly. Who as though for Persia, land he rode, the zeal destroyed, his idol guard, 
For though its offence his street was thrown to a dungeon dark and deep, well, when he fought his wrongs upon, he bitterly did wail and weep. Yet like a knight of courage stout, at length his way he digged out. Three grooms of the king of Persia, by night his valiant champion slew, though he is faced and fasted many a day, and in a way then from hence he flew, on the best steed of trophy the hand, which when he knew, which when he knew, he was fully mad, full mad. For by of towards Christendom he made his flight, but met the gallant by the way, with whom in combat he did fight, as was valiantly in summer's day, who yet for all his bats of steel was forced to sting a death to feel. Back over the seas of many bands, a warlike soldiers soon be passed, bearing upon those, those heavy lands, what revenge which at last, ex twice three years were gone and spent, he walked upon his heart's content, one day of Egypt's land he spared, for Sabrina bright only for her sake, and his sake, and her, her for her that, that were God, he meant a tyrant king to make. But well, meanwhile the king overcame unfield, until giant George did quickly yield. A straight monarch's king he slew, and took all fair Sabrina to his wife, but meant to try it if she were true. Aye, for her he would lead his life. And who he had in her in his train, she did a virgin pure remain. Toward England, that was a lovely, lovely, that, then that lovely dame, a brave St. George conducted straight, and Enoch also then came, who did upon the lady wait, days free from Egypt went alone, now Mark St. George swell her shown. When as they in the forest were, the lady did desire to rest. Meanwhile St. George to kill a deer, for their repast did think it best, leaving her with an eunuch there, while he did go to kill the deer. Not all his absence came, but in all his absence came, two hungry lions, fierce and fell, and tore the eunuch, on the same, in pieces small and true to, to tell, down by the lady, then, then they lay, whereby they slew, she was a maid. Then she came for the hunting back, and did behold this heavy chance, then for his lonely virgin's sake, he carried straight, he did revance, and came unto the lion's sight, who ran at him with all their might. A rage did him do her not with dismay. Who, like a stout and valiant knight, did both the hungry lions slay? Then the lady Sebra's sight, who for his wild sad and demure, who stood like most like a virgin pure. Then when St. George did surely know, his lady was a virgin true. His heart was glad and earnest as well. And all he loved did soon anew. He set her on a pantry steed, And towards England came with speed. When a being short space arrived Unto his native dwelling place, There on his lion and love he lived, And fortune did his nuptial grace. They many years a joy did see, And led their lives at Coventry.